Anyway, let's get into this pay-per-view, which I can barely see my notes from here, so <laughs> we're going to do our best. Which is funny, because it's not like it's a small new monitor. No, it's a, it's a giant monitor, but it's 18 feet away from yes. me, so the No Way Out pay-per-view... I thought it was a, a fine show. I don't know if I'd go as far as say a good show. It wasn't a bad show or anything like that. But as usual with WWE, it's all about the main events lately. Mm-hmm. It's all about the storyline in the main event. And they had a good main event, and they had a good angle in the main event. And I cannot give this a, a thumbs down for all of that. The matches were hurt by a crowd in L.A. that could have given a fuck less about this pay-per-view. But... That's not really WWE's fault. They 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 were working in front of a poor crowd. As a large silent crowd. Yeah. I, so. I ripped on you last I think last TNA show and you gave a thumbs in the middle. I must apologize because this was a thumbs in the middle show. Yeah. It was fine when we were watching it. I don't ever need to see it again. Yes. It was. If you're a big WWE fan, if you're thinking about buying the replay, I guess you can go ahead. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd go out of my way to get the replay, no. but you know. The opener was MVP and Eminem versus Benoit and the Hardys in a match. They were saved again, as we've stated many times. This is seriously like great comedy now. It is. These Eminem and the Hardys have been broken up and put back together behind the scenes so many times in the past two months. I mean, say what you will about... I mean, we've mentioned Vince McMahon lost his mind after the XFL, and and he's been a genius the last couple of months. He's still got his insanities, and that's very obvious. This is one of them. The Sam and M. Hardy's deal, but this was a a fine little opener. I actually gave it three and a quarter stars by the time all was said and done. They went a a long time, and Benoit is awesome. The Hardys were very good. Eminem is great. MVP is MVP. (laughs) He was... He didn't ruin anything. I figured he would be the sore thumb sticking out in this match, and, and that's exactly what he was. But but like Vince said, he didn't ruin anything, so I didn't have much of a problem with it. You get to see Benoit chop the hell out of him. Oh, yeah. Benoit was great. And, and there was actually a great moment early on where Benoit was running wild and beating the hell out of MVP. He was chopping him, kicking him, and slapping him very hard. And Benoit went – I'm sorry, MVP went to make the tag, and everybody just jumped off the apron. <laughs> you want no part of that man. He's a killer. He is a killer. We don't want to be in the ring with him, and it was it was wonderful. But anyway, big six-way in the main event, and, and Benoit put MVP in the cross face. Nitro broke it up. This was actually after a bunch of other near falls and such. So it was like they were giving us a, a WrestleMania preview here on the opener of the No Way Out pay-per-view. But – Anyway, a lot of near falls, that sort of thing, and then Benoit finally put Mercury in the cross face and got the submission, so fun match, and I'm sure Hardys and Eminem will immediately be broken up again, yeah. and, and for all we know, they'll all end up in the four-way ladder match at WrestleMania after all. They could do that. It was it, it was fun. It was kind of it was pointless in a way because the match happened, and now we're – so Benoit beats Mercury. So <laughs> I, well, I, well, the, I guess going in, Benoit needs an opponent. There's not a lot of candidates on SmackDown. Well, it wasn't going to be MVP. All right, well, that's, that's mad, <laughs> I figured they'd do something with those two. But, uh, so, yeah, but Benoit pins Mercury. And, and well, this is what happens when a man is put together the weekend before the pay-per-view. That's true. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. All that mattered was that they had a good match. And, by the way, the idea of a four-way uh, ladder match at WrestleMania is not going to happen because they are doing Money, Money in, the in the Bank, bank. again. And they're starting the, the – I guess the preliminary matches will begin on Raw to determine who is actually going to be – in the Money in the Bank match. Well, heck, maybe all four guys will be in it. I actually had a list. I, I didn't have a list. I had a um, I had the matches for tomorrow. I believe it's Rob Van Dam and Jeff Hardy, and the winner gets into the Money in the Bank match. So, sucks to be old RVD. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when you give your notice? They take you out of Mania. Right before WrestleMania, you get in trouble. So, actually, let's take a look at this. We've got the – oh, it's Edge against Raw Van Dam. So, Edge, oh, you're out of here, brother. Uh, RVD, you're out of here, brother. RVD, yeah. Well, Edge, I don't know. They may want to do something singles with Edge, but I guess not. It's probably going to be Edge and Orton both in Money in the Bank. That would be my guess. So, that's the deal there. Crystal, oh, boy. Well, let's talk about what happened here. Okay. Crystal interviewed a number of people throughout the evening. I love this woman. She's she is lovely. Gorgeous. Very easy on the eyes. God Damn, and maybe this was by design, but her interviews always, I mean, you guys are a couple. You guys are a match made in heaven. She will introduce the person to just saying. That's the We're, nicest thing anyone's ever said to me, by I the way. Know, I know. <laughs> We're here with Vicky Guerrero, and then she'll just stop. Yeah. 
for about that long, and then she'll ask her first question. And she does it every time. And I don't know if she's waiting for a reaction from the crowd or or if this is done by design to make us hate this woman. <laughs> but my, it's my, so bad. It was very awful. My, my theory is that they do this on SmackDown every week, and then the editing crowd noise. Could and perhaps be. she was not aware that this is a live pay per view. She has to be aware <laughs> because she's 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 not stupid. I don't know what the deal is, but all I know is the first person she interviewed was Vicky Guerrero, and Vicky said the big opportunity she had spoken of was very close to coming to fruition, <laughs> and she said she was going to have to do something this Friday on SmackDown. Now. I think that this is where it's going, as we we talked about a couple of days ago. Number one, the only logical reason for Crystal being all over this show is she screwed Teddy Long, and he's putting her on TV in every every segment that he can get her on. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Vicky Guerrero thanked Crystal repeatedly for all she had done, and they hugged. All that Crystal has done on TV is is butter up and. Uh, Perhaps literally, hot butter, Teddy Long. And that I really wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> well, you know, the whole peanut head thing. Move along. Anyway, the, uh, so it only makes sense that this coming Friday on SmackDown, Vicky Guerrero is going to sue Teddy Long for sexual harassment. And uh, he will leave. She will become the new GM. I can only imagine the unintentional comedy that... <laughs> That that will involve perhaps her and Crystal as co-GMs. Sure, why not? I can. Oh God, it's got to be something. They must. They must hate like um, um, us. No, like uh, Hillary Clinton. Oh, uh, I'm sure they do. The, the election's Actually. coming up, and, and they've got to. Uh, they've got to have a a bitchy female uh, a, GM, a woman figurehead. Yes, for everyone to bitch about. Yep, that, that that's got to be the whole thing here, because otherwise. Why Vicky Guerrero as GM of SmackDown? Why Crystal involved? Why? It makes no sense except for some sort of wacky political thing with an election coming up. Well, I always think of these things with WWE. That election is like 18 months away. For for those of you that, well, Teddy Long's been GM for like six years or well, probably two years. But for those of you that that are that are new to wrestling and that sort of thing, You'll never read this really anywhere except maybe two wrestling newsletters, myself and Dave's probably, and maybe here and there on the internet. But there is a very, very good possibility that George Bush won the election in the year 2000 because of Vince McMahon. Yes. That election was so unbelievably close. And the night before the election, WWE went out of their way to let everybody know that George Bush was the man to vote for. Pretty mm -hmm. much, I think Jerry Lawler outright said it. I believe he did. He cut a promo. In fact, I remember that his words were, I know who I don't want. I don't want... Uh, Al Gore? It was, it was the vice president. Candidate. Oh, Cheney? No, no, no. Cheney's the current vice president. Oh, the <laughs> Al Gore's vice presidential running mate. Oh, God, what the hell? Who cared? doesn't even matter. Not Brent Bozell. It was not Al Brent Bozell. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the point was, with 5 million viewers, if they skewed uh, a small number of those people, that could have swung the election. Well, particularly with how close Florida was, and obviously sure. a lot of people there, and a lot of people there were watching Raw. Anyway, the point was, there there is a method to the madness in WWE sometimes, so that's the only thing I can I can figure out by this insanity. That's but one more thing to blame Vince for, by the way. <laughs> sure, yeah. So, Finlay and the Midget were having a chat. The midget was afraid of the boogeyman, actually mini boogeyman. Little people are scary, he announced. <laughs> That's her exact words. Which somebody on the board is going to really get a kick out of, since they're terrified of the midget in Twin Peaks or whatever the deal was. So Finley gave him a hug, but then threw him into a dumpster, and then immediately the lights went out and red smoke rose, and, and out jumped. Little Boogeyman. Yes, Little Boogeyman was in the dumpster. He jiggled, and his gut is enormous. <laughs> he, he jiggled, and he stopped, but he also kept jiggling. He's got such a fat belly. I just like that Finley nonchalantly dumped his the sidekick, and he bin the clearly red glass only. Yes. Cruiserweight gauntlet for the title. Basic gauntlet match. Whoever got a pin or submission got to face the next entrant, and the winner ended up the champion. Scotty Tuati faced Daivari. And this is kind of one of those matches where they tell you where everybody is on the pecking order. Scotty Tuati beat Daivari with the worm. 
Indeed. The, the worm. worm. Even JBL was astounded. <laughs> Scotty Tuhati then faced Gregory Helms. Gregory Helms, of course, he cruiserweight champion. He won. We had Helms versus Funaki, a match that went 10 seconds, which Helms won, holding the tights. Helms faced Shannon Moore, pinned him in about a minute with a knee to the face. No heat for any of this, by the way. Well, then, no heat for the whole show. Well, Jimmy Wang Yang came in and people cared. That's true. Momentarily. And then they stopped caring. And after over a year straight of being the Cruiserweight champion, Gregory Helms lost to Jimmy Wang Yang in the middle of a pointless Cruiserweight gauntlet on No Way Out. This fucking annoyed me. It was dumb. <laughs> really? This is what I said? Well, let, let me let me finish this, and I'll explain the stupidity of this. Jimmy Wang Yang then faced Jamie Noble, uh, Noble and beat him. And afterwards, they were announcing Jimmy Wang as the champion when suddenly out came Chavo Guerrero. A surprise entrant. Yep. They had a match. Chavo won. And then it was over. That was some good time right there. <laughs> so then it was over. And, you know, there's a lot of talk of Mystico debuting in WWE. My only thought is that, well, maybe they think they're going to get him, and Chavo Guerrero's the best guy for him to wrestle in his first few matches, being a fellow Hispanic, a, a luchador, somebody who speaks Spanish. But then my thought was, why not hold this off and – or if you – I thought they'd sign him, actually, when this match – when I when I was in the middle of watching this match, because I thought – this would be perfect if if Jamie if uh, Gregory Helms went to the very end, beat everybody, and then out came Mystico and beat him for the title. Mm -hmm. As soon as Gregory Helms was pinned, I thought, well, that ain't happening. And then I thought, okay, well, Jimmy Wang Yang thought he won, and out came Chavo. Chavo beat him. Do the same deal. Chavo thinks he's won. You announce him as a champion, and fucking out comes Mystico. Beats Chavo for the title. Everybody's happy. Didn't do it. No. Now I've got no idea. Instead, <laughs> you've got Gregory Helms that they've been pushing forever as the longest reigning champion on SmackDown. Just lost it to Jimmy Wang Yang for no good reason. And now Chavo's a champion for no good reason. And that whole thing made me mad. In the middle of a heatless, pointless, utterly zero pointless. buy selling cruiserweight gauntlet mess. Yes. The 12 plus month title reign is rendered null and void. It Ultimately, it doesn't matter, but uh, th th there was almost a deal where he'd been champion for so long that it's almost like it was starting to mean something. Yeah. And now Think it about means that. nothing. The cruiserweight title seemed kind of important. Yep. JBL was pimping him every week. He'd come out with the belt. He'd beat everybody. Lance Storm put him over. And, <laughs> and Storm <laughs> gave him a thumbs up. Lance Storm's figured, favorite wrestler. I, I figured, and, and I don't know if Raising is going to be actually on the show, but I figured they would do Helms and Ray at Mania and do the longest reigning cruiserweight ever against the greatest cruiserweight ever. But that's out the window now. Well, the other idea is is Mysterio is coming back Thursday, or he's making an appearance Thursday, and Chavo was the guy that put him out of action, so I guess put the title back on Chavo. I Boy, that know. sucks to be Helms then. Yeah, and, this... I get, and really, when you think about it, with, with Mysterio coming back, there ain't no room for Mystico right now. This, yeah. this is the worst time for him to debut. So, I don't know. I don't either, but regardless, we hated this. Actually, I don't even know how long before Mysterio can come back. I don't even know if he can come back at this point. I I, I don't even know what the deal so, is. So. I, I thought he'd be back by Mania, but I, that, I remember I remember asking you about this like when he first left last summer. I already forget. So, I forget. So someone that. someone said he would not be back, and he was only making an appearance on SmackDown this week. I think it is only an appearance, but I, I forget exactly the the circumstances of his surgery and and how. I believe it was pretty serious surgery, and with pretty serious knee surgery, I don't even remember when he was put out of action, but that'll put you out of action for a while. Yeah. So, anyway, we had Finlay and the Mini Finlay versus Boogeyman and Mini Boogeyman. This was a match that, with a better crowd, would have been so awesome. Yeah, this was so much better than it, any of us had any right to expect. And, and it was, I mean, even with the bad crowd, they still got into certain parts of it. We basically had. Boogie running wild on Finlay early, the full-size virgins. Virgins, well. I don't know that much about them. It's possible. I don't either, really. Well, you would think they both reproduced since their mini counterparts are their children, <laughs> according to... Uh, JBL. I believe JBL, but... So Little Bastard got in the ring after mini Boogie uh, ran wild there for a little while, and... And yes. little little bastard was rolling up his sleeves, and the place was going nuts for this fight. And right when they were about to fight, Fit Finley kicked the mini boogeyman right in the face, and we all cheered. 
This was this was a fantastic fucking thing. And then he picked up the midget, and the midget gave him a small package. <laughs> that was even better. And nearly pinned him. And then Finley put on a short arm scissors. Now, I realize that nobody in L.A. had any idea what he was putting on. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care that this was an inside joke that 54 people got. Yes. I laughed my ass off <laughs> at the short arm scissors on the midget. Even if you don't know that that's what this move is called, I understand that no one in L.A. did, and most people watching did not. Just watching the mechanics of Finley take this tiny little arm <laughs> and bend it over his arm and swing his leg over and... Great. This was great comedy. So then little Boogie bumped outside... And little bastard pulled him out of the ring, and Finlay went to look for him. Out came the boogeyman, the full-sized one, and no one cared. No. All anyone wanted to see was the midgets. Yes. Which... I, uh, I love that, that. That was the spot. Finley goes and searches the midgets, opens the ring. There's there's Big Boogie, as as Michael Cole called him. So Finley just hauled off and booted him in the face. Yes. <laughs> wow, that was a hell of a comeback there. So the, end, the finish ended up being little bastard running through the crowd, being chased by boogeyman, and then Finley hit mini boogeyman with the shillelagh. <laughs> He hit the midget with a gimmick yeah. in order to pin him. He, and I, I don't say this as a complaint, but he could not beat the midget clean. No, I, I'm I'm fine with yeah, that. In this match, he he should have used the shillelagh. The fact that he hit a midget with a foreign <laughs> object to get the pin, Fit Finley. Yes. I gave this a star and three quarter just because wrestling wise, that's what it was. But this was five star entertainment. Yeah. I loved this this I, whole debacle. I and Craig was like, "This is going to be horrible," and I said, "This will be great." I was right. You were definitely right. It, 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 this, as a circus act, it was thumbs up. It was thumbs up. Finley can just make anything great. He can. That's anything. What, that has been proven now. Yes. This is why he's great. Crystal was back, and she interviewed Sean, and he did this interview like he knew a broom was interviewing him. <laughs> he had that look on his face like, what am I doing here with this woman asking me these questions with these pauses? Oh, yeah. Said he would do, uh, make sure nothing happened to Cena between now and WrestleMania. Kane and Booker. You guys actually, everyone in the room with me was very down on this match. And I will admit that the first half of it blew. Most, mm -hmm. Mostly when, when Booker was, uh, or actually when, when Kane was running wild on Booker early. This sucked. And then Booker took over, and it seemed like there was a point where he decided, I'm going to have a good match with this fucking guy. And they had a, a pretty damn good match. And Kane made a big comeback and hit the diving clothesline, and Charmel jumped up on the apron. Booker hit a wheel kick, but then as he went for the axe kick, Kane choke slammed him for the pin. I gave it two and three quarters in the end. It was it was fine, not a great match or anything like that. But Booker Booker had his working shoes on for the second half, and and Kane looked fine, so I had no problem with this one. I actually mostly agree with you. Uh, everyone else was talking about how bad it was, and and like you say, it was boring in the beginning. It, the key to me was when Booker at one point applied a, a top wrist lock, and Craig immediately hit the fast forward button, and you, and you yelled at him. This annoyed me. Well, I, and I might have yelled at him too, but then I noticed in fast forward he was still in that damn wrist lock for a long fucking time. Well, yeah, but <laughs> I, 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 listen, I, I'm fine with fast forwarding through entrances and crap like that, but I, I have to watch the matches, even if it's bad shit. Because part of the whole deal is how is the crowd responding to this top wrist lock, which wasn't even a top wrist lock. It was one of those wacky Kimuras that we saw the other day that, oh, my bad. that there's no – well, it may have been a top wrist lock. It was it's some sort of wacky – You had a hold on. You had a hold on. There that, were two men laying on the mat in a hold and not moving. I just remember I just remember the Kimura that we were talking about where it was like the guy had his arm on his hip. Kennedy and it's like, and Dave. how could that be hurting the man? Yeah. Is it that hard to just do a one-hour seminar on MMA for all these fucking wrestlers to show them if you're going to put someone in a hold, you should try to, you know, make it look like you're cranking on the arm? Yes. There's more to a hold than just figure fouring a man's arm. You have to have some sort of illusion of, of, of some sort of – You want uh, you want it to appear that the individual in the hold is, in fact, in pain. Yeah, like like if you moved your hands, he wouldn't just keep his arm there. Right. That's – I don't know. So anyway – Crystal interviewed Dave. It was now seriously bad. Her and Dave together. Oh, horrible idea. Horrible idea. London and Kendrick faced the Greasers for the tag tiles. Another match that I gave it two and a quarter stars. I've seen way worse matches. Everybody looked fine, mostly because London and Kendrick are great. And I've been thinking about this whole thing with the Greasers. And I was thinking, you know, when they separate them from London and Kendrick, they may really be exposed. 
And then I thought, are there any other teams? <laughs> Who else could they possibly face on SmackDown? What uh, are the other teams? MVP there, and Kennedy. Weren't there a bunch just not that long ago when, like, four teams running around on SmackDown? They've been fired and broken up. I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. M&M, I, I remember, maybe? I guess. The Hardys? I don't know I who they're going to face, but... Meltzer mentioned in, in one of his updates that he expected a title change here, and I was like, are you mad? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, I wouldn't have been surprised. I actually didn't think it was going to happen, because there have just been so many... It's just one victory after the other for the Greasers. You figured they were that, going to that's uh, what I figured. be that's... foiled at the end, right. but... You know, it's when you're trying to get a team over, that's one way to do it. They just beat I mean, everybody. And... Well, <laughs> they beat two drawers and then beat the champs about eight times. But, yeah. But they did beat everybody. But the London Kendrick did win. It was a bad guys won for the Doomsday device, which... And never has the term Doomsday been more appropriate. <laughs> Kendrick did a victory roll for the pin. Fine, all things considered. As far as Deuce and Domino go... As bad as Deuce is, Domino's on another level. <laughs> he really is. I mean, Deuce is such that if he hits you hard enough, and if you take good enough bumps, things are okay. Domino? It's not that good. Oh, my gosh. Domino he, taking bumps is great comedy. It, it is. It's it's it's, it's, it's so just, good that you don't want him to improve. It is. He, 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 he jumps, and he throws his arms and legs out, and he just kind of – he doesn't go to his back. He just kind of falls down. Yes. <laughs> Crystal interviewed – Bobby, Bobby who? Maybe Lashley? I would assume not oh, no, Holly no, or Kennedy. You wrote Bobby? I wrote Bobby. Well, there was to... Bobby Kennedy. If Crystal interviewed Bobby Kennedy, that would be newsworthy. That would be, but she didn't. She interviewed Kennedy, and he got cheap heat by calling the people L.A. phonies, and then he said he and Crystal were on TV, and everybody else was just there watching, and then he paused and said, paying... And then he just sort of fizzled out, <laughs> and Lashley walked up and said he had one word for Kennedy, halitosis. That means bad breath. And then he punched him. This was bad. And then? This was real bad. Kennedy lay on the ground holding his mouth for about 20 seconds. This was a negative star segment. Kennedy's... Oh, God. Watching Kennedy here made me realize how good the rest of his promos have been. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out where all these good promos are. Well, this was the worst one. <laughs> this <laughs> Every promo every he's ever cut was way better hideous. than this. So, Crystal sucked. Kennedy sucked bad. Lashley came up and delivered a very sucky line, and then he punched him. <laughs> oh, my God. And then they had a match. And it was all downhill from there. I gave it a star and a quarter because I was just feeling generous. I was like, they went a long time. They told a story. Other than that, utterly useless. So in going a long time, you get that eight, a bonus for that. Well, I, I it, thought this should have been about eight minutes shorter. It, it should have. <laughs> That's why it only got a star and a quarter. All right. I figured for as long as they went and the fact that they, they did a story, it deserves at least a star and a quarter. Really, this was a minus five star match. <laughs> this was very bad. It was so boring. It, this was one of the few matches in the show that actually had heat. But the heat consisted of one guy, and he was cheering for Kennedy. Yes. Th th <laughs> this actually got a reaction, and it was a reaction of anger. You could hear people getting restless. You could hear them getting angry. Mm -hmm. You could hear boring chants. You could hear people screaming, and this was just not good. And through it all, this one guy, Lashley sucks. Kennedy. And they do the, boo the punches, and you go, boo, yay, boo, yay, but he was booing Lashley. Kennedy was so utterly horrible and boring in this match. He worked over the leg for a long time. He did a wacky reverse figure four. He did some other crazy stuff. and No and one cared about any of it. Nobody gave a rat's ass. And the two things here were, first off, Cole was losing his voice all throughout the show. They should have just replaced him. It was getting absurd. And JBL, during this match in particular, had to call pretty much the whole match. Mm -hmm. And he decided to try and convince everybody that we were watching something great. Yes. Even throughout the line that all aspiring wrestlers should watch this match and learn. All of you aspiring wrestlers out there, don't watch this match unless you want to have a very short career or a very boring career. This was horrid. Well, I've heard Cornette say that you should watch bad wrestling and learn what not to do. You should. This would be a fine example of that. Well, if you're going to tell the, the children to watch a match on this show, 
Tell him to watch the fucking main event. Yeah. That was a great match. This was horrible. So after going seemingly six hours of bullshit, chair shot DQ finish. Boo. And when Lashley tried to throw the chair shot the first time, Kennedy ran away. And he was halfway out the ropes when Lashley actually hit him for the DQ. I didn't even realize that because I, I knew the DQ was coming. I was already rolling my eyes. Yeah. And they and then... Uh, he sat through all this just to watch him hit him with a chair. Lashley laid him out with 8,000 different wacky chair shots. And we've now got the usual ECW formula. You put a match on pay-per-view. You don't have a clean finish. You give it away for free on Tuesday, and nobody watches. Yay. Fuck this brand. <laughs> Indeed. ECW sucks. I also noticed that... Uh, this made me so mad, I'm actually I'm reconsidering this. this. You're going to go back and revise your rating? This may be a negative one-star match, I'm starting to think. There was very little to like about it. Very little to recommend. Very very little to uh, enjoy. I did notice people were leaving during Lashley's comeback. That's usually a bad sign. Yeah, hell of a hell of a heel when the babyface makes a comeback yeah. and people leave. I also love that one of Lashley's big spots is he hoists the guy up for the big suplex. And if he's really feeling it, he'll hold that one arm and hold him up with one arm. Kennedy decided to fight this suplex <laughs> like it was a real hole. He's up there kicking his legs back and forth, throwing everything off balance so Bobby can't make it look cool. Yes, yes. Kennedy, Kennedy two thumbs down on this show here. Uh, and boy, and another guy that, that I was snowed by, by watching him have matches with good guys and deciding he'd improved. And then you Kennedy. see him on his own trying to carry a match, and you're like, holy shit. This guy sucks. The more I see of Kennedy, the more that match with, with Batista at the last pay-per-view was seriously five stars. I mean, that was a it, miracle. It was the best they could do. That was a miracle of miracles, They that match have right both there. looked wretched since then. Kennedy. Oh, my God. Anyway, oh, the other the other great line was was JBL trying to explain that the reason the the fans were booing was because he was getting the heat on on Lashley. Yeah, Lashley was losing; they didn't want to see Kennedy win. Yeah, no, eh, I can't blame him for that one. I guess Miz came out to host a talent contest. He has an MTV logo on his coat, which makes me laugh just because of the old WSX deal. First to go were the ECW girls doing their little wacky dance, which I could never get sick of, let me tell you. Brooks' ass literally has more rhythm than anyone I know. (laughs) Yeah. So then out came Jillian, who looks more like Brooke Hogan every single day. Not even every single week. It's by the day now. I think she looks more like Brooke during the segment. Yeah. She got Brooker. She had her own song tonight. I was hoping it would be Without Us or whatever. I was hoping they'd bring out Paul Wall. That would have made it perfect. Yeah. She was the first person on the show to actually get real heat in L.A. <laughs> Think about that. She sang her song. People were laughing. Miz cut her off, said she was horrible. She said she had more talent, unlike all the ECW girls. They were so untalented, she said, they could not even be her backup dancers. So That's a diss. Yeah. T- called them talentless bitches. Buried Candice and all the other girls in talent contest, who actually were just... Here are the girls in a talent contest. <laughs> we had Brooke. We had Tess's girlfriend. I've already forgotten all these names. I don't know if I got Kelly, here in the head Kelly. today. Kelly, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. <laughs> Brooke, Kelly, Kelly, and the Diva Search winner. Layla. Those two don't matter. Let's be serious they, they, here. They, Those three count as one. The only one that matters is Brooke. Actually, Brooke's ass is the only <laughs> thing that matters. Not even all of Brooke. Wow. Well... Look at her. I'm Come not denying it. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying it's a strong statement. So, so you had those three. You had the Brooke Hogan lookalike. And then Jillian. you had Candace, Maria, and the Vampires girl. Who I don't care what her name those is. Those are all the girls. No one else on the on any of the brands apparently has any talent. That was the extent of the girls involved <laughs> in this talent That's contest. That's true. Well, there was, must that Chava Guerrero, a surprise entrant. We never found out what Candace's talent was, or or Maria or Ariel. So I, I I guarantee you, Jillian was right. Candace's talent would have been to do her Go Daddy dance. Yes, <laughs> I guarantee that. Her talent actually was her top not coming off. That's when true. She, when she brought those of you who saw this ta- top, and and, and it, it stayed on the whole time, and that took uh modern science. Yes. So she uh, came out, and and they all were having this big brawl, and then Ashley came out, and she stole the deal from Sable, where she had. Playboy bunny paint on her breasts and nothing else. And I guess if it were a hot girl, it would be like, whoa, that's pretty great. Instead, it was Ashley. It was just Ashley, and and, and none of us in the room cared. 
No one in L.A. cared. All I could think was the L.A. crowd was like, wow, a hot blonde with fake boobs. Yeah. Never seen that in Los Angeles before. No. Wow. No, no, you've never seen a naked woman get less heat. No. Just, just no one cared. Then they dropped the the banner or the 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 the, the cover and and played her song and that was that. That was the end of the talent show. Here's a backstage note from the pay per view. Batista went to dinner in shorts and a t shirt, violating the dress code. Dun dun dun. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Fine. Thousand <laughs> dollar fine. Oh, then we had the main event, which was the main event. Oh, my God, was it the main event? This is what it means when you've got a main event. <laughs> the rest of the show is just a show. Shawn Michaels and Cena versus Undertaker and Big Dave. You can read the newsletter to read the whole thing about it, but it was just a, a great match, a great tag team match with, with four baby faces that somehow it worked because they're all so great in their own way. <laughs> okay. Big Dave is a worker, hideous. Yes. John Cena, pretty bad, but not hideous. It was just very telling because you had these four guys in there, and you'd have Sean working with Dave, and you're like, God, Dave looks good. And then Cena would tag in, and they just botch like three spots <laughs> yes. in a row. And you'd be like, well, it snowed again. The, the, the most night and day moment for me was Taker was making a comeback, and you'd hit Sean, and Sean would take a bump, then hit Cena, and Cena would take a bump. And these two bumps would not look the same. No. There would no. be a difference in quality. There would be a, a major difference in quality, but, I mean... It didn't matter in this match. These guys were just all over. And and Cena had his big mixed reaction, the biggest one in a long, long time. I, I thought Cena was... hated this man. Yeah, but I thought Cena was far and away the biggest star to this crowd. I... Well, I don't know. Undertaker was, was, Taker was pretty goddamn big. Regardless, Under... he was definitely in this match, whoever he was. A decision was made prior to this match, I believe, because the finish, it was one of those great finishes where all sorts of things were happening, but... They got heat on on Sean for a while, and then he made a tag, and then they got heat on Big Dave for a while, and and finally we had Undertaker getting the hot tag, and he had the biggest pop of the night when he got the hot tag at the end. I will say that without question. Okay. Big comeback, hit Cena with the clothesline, and Dave laid or sorry the choke slam, and Dave laid out Sean with the spine buster, and so you had both SmackDown stars standing there triumphant. And then all of a sudden, Big Dave gave Taker the sidewalk slam, and the fucking place went nuts. They turned on him immediately. No, I, I, I cannot say immediately. At first, when he hit Undertaker, there was a gigantic pop, and everyone screamed and cheered, and then they were like, boo, <laughs> what are you doing, you fucker? So he was laid out, and, and Sean was down, and Cena was down, and Taker was down, and Batista stepped outside, and, and as Undertaker got to his feet, Sean super kicked him, and he stumbled into Cena, who gave him the FU, pinned him. It was beautiful. It was great stuff. Yeah. And and the, the key to this is, I think they figured out Undertaker's the dude. Undertaker's <laughs> got to beat Big Dave. And there there's, I mean, when you look at it, it didn't matter who lost, but who lost... They weren't just they weren't just picking a name out of a hat. No, they weren't drawing straws. Whoever lost, there was a reason for him losing. And Dave turning on Undertaker, that means something. Undertaker's beaten Dave, and I'm happy about that. Streak don't need to end, and Big Dave does not, not need to, need be to the win. Champion no, he, right now. he does not need to be the guy who beats Undertaker. Streak. No, I mean, that streak. I knew it was over, but we went to the SmackDown TVs, and I saw all these signs. That said, some said 15 and 0, and some said 14 and 1. And I thought, my God, Taker's Undertaker streak is a big star. It is. Or, it, it is a major, Taker's major deal. Mania streak. Yeah, and, and and I think the thing, you know, Undertaker's been working so hard, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that he wouldn't work as hard if he wasn't winning, but I think he's working pretty damn hard. <laughs> I think he knows this is his last great run and his last big shot at the title. And he's he is performing. Well, I think he's about the man. Him and Shawn Michaels both. These guys, the, the, the old dogs, are leading the way still. And, and I think Shawn's actually going to put Cena over. I do too. If, if I were if I were booking this show, Cena would beat Shawn clean, and Undertaker would beat Dave. That's it. That's that's the way it'll go. And, and I think that I think that the fact that they're they're subtly making Batista the heel in this feud, it's actually not that subtle, but. <laughs> But I mean, right now, if there's a heel, it's Dave. It, it is. It, it is. If there's a heel of those four guys, it's Dave. And I, and I think that makes sense that, you know, the heel's going to lose at WrestleMania. Yeah. And with Sean and Cena, two baby faces, it doesn't matter. As long as they have a great match and shake hands in the end, that's a time where you can do a handshake, and I'm fine with it. Yeah. Usually, it's just overdone handshakes like in TNA. Everybody's fucking shaking hands three times during the show. Bullshit. 
Have Sean and Cena hate each other. Have them fight. Have them do the match. Have them shake hands. You're both baby faces. And move on with life. I, I think a big part of it, too, is this occurred to me during the, Sean's promo when he's running down the, his mean and mean events. I thought about these four guys, and this is Sean's fifth, I think. It'll be Cena's third mean and mean event. It'll be Big Dave's second, and I think it's actually only going to be Undertaker's second. Mm. I could be wrong, but I think it's only the one was against, was against Sid. And he had the one with Sid. And, and, and I, I think if I was Undertaker, I think, you know, I bet I could have a better WrestleMania main event than the match with Sid. Well, Big Dave, <laughs> that's a, it's a, I don't know. There's very strong parallels, actually, between those two. There are extraordinarily strong parallels between those two. Large, effect. fragile. Yeah. So, anyway, this was just great booking in the main event. They, they are on such a roll, on, on the top of the card in WWE, such a roll. And I'm excited for Raw. I really We're am. excited for Raw or stoked for Mania? Well, yeah, I'm very excited for WrestleMania, too. But I'm more excited for Raw just because I want to see where they're going. Yeah. WrestleMania's coming. I can get excited for that later on. But Raw hopefully will be a fun show because it's almost like you're just waiting for something to go wrong because it's just all so great. <laughs> I, I, I just cursed the company, didn't I? I actually had someone oh, day I was driving around thinking, God, what if, like, Taker and Dave got hurt tonight? <laughs> Well, it's I mean, only one match out. Actually, that only won one match. So, so yeah, Taker and Sean getting hurt would be Sean much worse. If Sean and Taker got hurt, that, that was, oh, that, Christ, I'd That cry. was my thought. I thought, what would they do if Taker and Sean got hurt? And I thought, they put Cena and Dave together, and that would be a nightmare. <laughs> that would be a bad, bad match. Yes. Oh, boy. I also think, that this is a very minor deal, but it, you had this match. You had the main event versus the main event. You also had one side was the tag team champions. The other side wasn't. Champions should just go ahead and win. <laughs> that's that's your whole thought. Well, no, that didn't even begin to occur. That's to me. way down the list, but hey, no. It, it didn't, uh, it, if if the tag titles meant something in the last eighteen years in this company, then then maybe that would be something. But eh, don't matter. It's no matter. So anyway, kids, that's the report from the pay per view.